Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be taking a look in some equipment to help you on your cinematography, filmography or content creation journey. Now, just to be very clear, everything I have in here with me I will be linking on the description below. This will help the channel if you guys buy anything. I get a couple of pennies here and there for everything. So I just want to be very clear with you guys. At the same time, I'm not telling you guys to get anything. To be honest, don't buy any of those things I'm showing you unless you feel you need, not want. Because that's one of the biggest issues. Uh, I see that a lot in film school. A lot of people I know bought gimbals in the, in the past and they realized they have used only once. They paid $800 in a piece of equipment that they never used. So. Let's start. All right, so first of all, um, let's talk about the most important thing when you're doing content creation or uh, film or anything in between, and it's sound. Now, I know, it's film. Sound shouldn't be first, but yes, you can have uh, not as great quality in your video and have good sound and have better chance of people watching your content. If you have beautiful video and horrible sound, trust me, people will try to watch, but it becomes very hard. So the first thing I would say, have good sound. Phones, for the most part, have pretty decent sound and the most when you go to the iPhone lines, but depending on the situation, it just doesn't work. And doesn't matter how much you try to clean your audio, it's just not good. Second thing is buying a cheap levy, uh, level year, uh, level year, Mike, uh, may not be the best thing because there are a lot of products in there for $10, $20 that they just don't work as well. So the microphone I have, I'm using right now, it's the Rode uh, Pro and it's only about $58, give or take, $59. So, Really good microphone, some noise canceling. It comes out clear. And if you think my voice sounds horrible, it's just my voice. <laughs> anyway, uh, but yes, really good mic. The only problem you're gonna find is the cord is short. Um, I would be very careful using extenders because they may take some of the outer quality, but there are great mics in the most because you can use with uh, wireless setups so you can pretty much plug in your wireless and use really good quality mic with hopefully a decent quality transmitter and receiver so this is a good buy uh i gotta post uh below so this goes for around 60 dollars i would say now if you want to use that with an iphone i actually bought this adapter that's not the first adapter I bought. This is the first adapter that was actually cheap and worked really well. Uh, this one is a JXMOX. <laughs> I, I took the risk. That was something like $7. Um, but yes, it works really well with the iPhone and should work just fine with any Android because sound is extremely important. You may not be able to use, in all cases, lavalier mics, right? So, I actually gonna show you, this is the Boya M1. I bought this about five years ago, so I do need to tell you, this is an old microphone. They still sell it, it goes for about $30 right now on Amazon. And it is a really good mic. Uh, you cannot compare it to a Rode mic. Okay, in the most if you're filming outside, but it is decent. And that's the only one that I can that I can actually advise you guys to buy without going to something like this one that's gonna cost you a few hundred dollars. So Boya, I don't know, unless it changed, they had pretty good products. Like I said, it's a five-year-old mic, decent sound, a little bit on the high-pitched. Uh, so you would have to, you know, fix the sound on pulse, but still pretty decent, pretty solid. Um, 
and they probably have new products. So take a look uh, again for a shotgun mic. This is pretty decent. Okay, now what is the second most important thing when you do content creation or when you do filmmaking? Lights. So I'm not going to tell you to buy my Fovitac mic uh, light that costs over $200, $300. Uh, I'm not going to go into those. I will say for the most part, if you're starting up, don't invest so much money on this type of products. You have other options, but also remember that the less you spend now, the more you're going to spend later. So in the past, I bought, for example, uh, cheap green screens and I bought multiple ones and I would have probably paid the same amount of money if I had bought a slightly more expensive one that actually worked. So lights, I have the one I use in here in the back. It's fairly small and it's a Ulami, Ulami uh, light, right? Those lights go for about $20, uh, pretty solid light. It's great for your filming outside, the most uh, just content creation. You just pretty much like hook up on top of your camera or your camera cage or your phone camera cage and pretty much on the go. This works fine. It holds a charge of about hour and a half, two hours in full strength. And you can actually plug on a USB-C charger to not have to worry about how long it's going to last. It can be charged at the same time that it's on. Now, this, again, remember, this is a $20 light. So it does feel cheap, even if it works really well. And it's not waterproof. So a lot of times, if you guys get really into filmmaking, you probably want to get a waterproof light. So you can film anywhere and not have to worry about your life, uh, your light dying completely and you still have to create content and be stuck on that until you buy another one. So anyway, really good light uh, for indoors and for some situations and it fits in your pocket. So really not many issues. Also RGB. So it's great. All right. Now something. Um, I cannot give you a link because I bought from Timu. So, and I'm not saying buy this one. What I'm trying to say is have a toolkit. If you're doing filmmaking and the most of you go into having a camera cage or anything, if you're not just using your phone straight away, you probably want to have some type of toolkit with you. Basically because you may have to tighten a screw or remove something. A lot of times when you're working with cameras, you start moving around, you start using some equipment and you realize you over tighten something without meaning to. So definitely uh, have a toolkit with you guys. Um, you can find online. It doesn't need to be anything special, but just something you definitely need to have. Next one I'm going to be talking about is this. So this is Magic Arm. And also, I'll talk about the clamps. So, and you're wondering why you need those things. So, this one's a short one. Uh, I believe it's uh, 5.1 inches. I do have a 7 or 9 inch magic arm using to hold my monitor. Now, those things are great for many reasons. Uh, one of the things, uh, the most in filmmaking, content creation in general, uh, commercials, you can use those very easy. One of the best things is just hook this up in the clamp. You put a phone adapter, for example, on top. All right, I'm not tightening this thing completely, but basically you can set up, for example, a remote control, right? Clamp this in the remote control, start filming, and what you're going to be having is the POV of you holding the remote control. And you see that a lot of movies or anything, when it seems like the camera is right on the person's hand as they move perfectly, and that's how, that's how you do it. 
Uh, also, if you do a commercial about a restaurant, for example, what you can do is just hook this in a tray. Uh, it can be a tray of drinks, food, or anything, and just have someone carrying this around and put it on the table. So, pretty cool, right? All right, so next thing that, well, I'm not going to put this in, you know, a description, but those are zip ties. So zip ties, you have no idea how much this can save your life and your equipment. Now, those are small ones um, that you only use for basic stuff. Like, for example, if you have a boom mic and you don't want the cord to be flapping around where it may hit the microphone um, and cause unwanted noise. So you pretty much just wrap around the cord, down the boom mic, and you don't have to worry about it. So now you can, you have a thousand one use for it. Uh, you can use some of the bigger ones. If you have a rig for your car, you probably want to zip tie this thing or use some other forms to tie the camera down. So if anything goes wrong with your rig, you don't lose a very expensive camera. All right, so another thing. This is a little pack of camera screw combos, 26 pack. Um, the reason why I needed, because so this type are adapters. In this case, for example, I needed to adapt the shoe into something. I don't even know what I needed for. So pretty much those are adapters. A lot of them are male to male. Uh, they can be one size to a different size. So pretty much uh, it's kind of stuff that is good for you to have because you never know when you're going to need. And when you do, you realize you may not be able to shoot whatever you want to shoot without it. So paid like $14 and it has saved my life multiple times and a lot of time as well. So those are the kind of things you probably want to keep in your mind. The other one is camera cages. Uh, just one thing about camera cages, you really, if you do any type of content, you probably want to have a camera cage with you because regular cameras, uh, they only gonna have one mount. So if you're doing, for example, documentary, or even if you're doing, um, any type of content for like YouTube, TikTok, you may want, you may have to mount your microphone on top of the camera. What it means now you can't mount anything else and you may need lights, uh, you may need uh, battery power or something. So that's a reason why you probably want to have cages in the most if you're using something like um, a cine camera. Cine camera, definitely you need to have. Mine is a small rig uh, cage for the BMCC Pocket 4K. There are many in the market. Um, you really have to look at what fits your needs. They're not usually expensive. I actually gonna link a couple for cell phones below for one reason. If you decide to make content with uh, an iPhone, one of the main issues of, with the iPhone is you cannot control the f-stops. What it means, if you use certain apps to be able to record and you're outside, the image is going to get blown up. Now, the problem, and I'm going to act like you don't know anything about film. You cannot gain, you cannot make something darker if there's too much light. You will lose a lot of the information. Now, if you have something dark, you can make it brighter, right? I know it's a very basic way to put it, but I'm just talking to everybody, not just with people that already have some experience. So for that reason, uh, there are some camera cages that actually allow you to put ND filters on the camera. So I will have a couple of them below um, and I'll have the simple one that doesn't allow you to put filters on as well. They're about the same price for the most uh, for the most part. And but again, I haven't tested them, so take with a grain of salt. I'm not saying those are the ones you should be buying. 
I feel you should be doing some research for yourself as well on the best ones. And when I get mine, because I'm probably going to need, um, I will review whatever I actually get for myself. All right, guys. So that's about it today. Let me know if that's any, if you have any questions about equipment you should buy, uh, leave in the comments. Let me know. And next week, I'm going to have a video talking about the cheapest camera you can ever buy and make good content or even film. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. I hope you guys have a great end of your day. And as always, I'll see you in the movies.